I was just sitting down for lunch alongside most of the crew when Captain Sunlight joined us with an announcement. She tapped her claws against the doorframe for attention. Minor detour before we reach the station, she said when everyone quieted. We're taking a different wormhole and doing a job on the way. This is a weird one. The client was cagey with the details. He said not to tell anyone else, so of course I'm telling all of you, because you deserve to know what you're getting into. Even if we're not entirely sure what we're getting into. She shook her lizardy head in exasperation. G spoke up. What's the task and why are we doing it? We're parking the ship briefly, said the captain, waving vaguely in what I assumed was the direction of the wormhole. In the middle of nowhere, at a precise location and time, staying there for at least fifteen minutes, then we go get paid. Huh, said Paint. That is weird. Before anyone asks, I did press the client for specifics. He promises there are no hazards of any kind, and willingly signed every form I threw at him. He paid half up front. He paid extra. This is clearly very important, and he didn't want to say why. But we're covered if anything untoward happens, which it shouldn't. Moore waved a tentacle. He's probably a spy. That's my vote. Eggskin took a lid off a food dish with the air of someone deliberately not paying attention. Spies are generally more subtle, in my experience. I made a mental note to ask Eggskin about that later. G was talking now. What type of person was this client? he asked. As far as you know. Captain Sunlight recited a list, counting on her knuckles as she did. Wealthy, planet-based, human, young adult. Oh, human, I said. I would have liked to be there for that conversation, see if I could pick up any clues from body language. Did he seem calm or twitchy like he knew it was a bad idea? Captain Sunlight spread her hands. I'm sure I don't know, but you're free to speculate. It will be a while before we arrive at the designated location. You all may as well finish lunch. I just wanted to keep everyone informed. Nobody else had questions so she left to tell the others who hadn't heard yet. Mimi was still in the engine room, and Truly was finishing a translation with Coles. Aside from Wu in the cockpit, that was all of us here, and we were ready to talk about it. Maybe it's a sport, suggested Blip, one we haven't heard of yet. Like what? asked Blop. He would have said if a ball was going to hit our ship or something like that. No, I mean like a strategy game with pieces scattered around the galaxy, Maybe light has to reflect off our ship or something. I still think he's a spy, insisted Murr. G turned back to his food. I expect he's an imbecile. Perhaps he lost something drifting in space and wanted our ship to intercept it accidentally. Paint shook her head. No, he would have said if something was on a collision course, even something soft. I think it's science, Kavli said, popping open a can of something. No idea what the experiment is or what we're helping to accomplish, but something. I'd been thinking up other possibilities and a new one occurred to me. I wonder, I said, if he's doing a really complicated marriage proposal. A what? G asked, cleaning his mandibles in the bug alien equivalent of licking his lips. Oh, a mating offer. Aren't those always complicated for your species? They can be, I said. Some people like to make grand gestures, like pay to have it written in the sky, or something else visible and dramatic. I could see our ship being a last-minute replacement for one that couldn't make it to the line-up in time. Hmm, G said noncommittally. How embarrassing. Then he stuck his face back in the bowl of intestines or whatever, and I looked somewhere else. That would be exciting, Paint said. I wonder if the captain asked about any other ships in the region. Guess we'll find out, said Murr as he cracked a walnut with one tentacle. Walnutish, at any rate. It looked kind of purple. I hope we find out, I said. If the client manages to keep it a secret, I think we'll all be disappointed. The others agreed, and I turned my attention back to my own lunch. It was a peanut butter and honey sandwich with apple slices and a fruit and veg smoothie. All tasty stuff. Not a soul on board aside from me was going to touch the honey, because apparently they didn't grow up on planets where insect spit and nectar was a popular food item. Their loss... Lunch passed without incident, and so did the time until we arrived at the super-secret rendezvous point. Everybody who didn't have something more important to do loitered in the hallway outside the cockpit, hoping for clues. Apparently this patch of space was empty as we approached, 
which ruled out a couple theories. Paint clicked her claws together nervously. Are we sure we're not bait for something? I know he signed the forms. Weo called from the pilot seat. There is absolutely nothing on the scanners, and I've got them set to max. Short of another space worm adventure, nothing's going to sneak up on us. Kavlai made a considering sound. That would be some interesting science. I had to laugh. Interesting is one word for it. The time we'd seen a new wormhole being created, courtesy of the space worms being chased by something larger and worse, there had been far more panic than scientific curiosity. I'm pretty sure no one's figured out how to track space worms, much less predict where they're going to be with this kind of accuracy. Has the timing started yet? G asked. Captain Sunlight said over her shoulder, We're here early. I wanted to give us time to take our position with absolute certainty. There was some grumbling, mostly from G, and we settled in to wait. Finally, Captain Sunlight announced the beginning of the timer, and we waited some more. Not a thing stirred. Weo kept a constant eye on all the scanners and sensors, while the rest of us watched the screens as best we could, without crowding in there and getting in the way. Nothing happened. And we're done, said the captain. Anticlimactic is better than crisis. Weo, take us into the station. Weo did, aiming for the nearest wormhole and making the trip with more disappointing uneventfulness. Thankfully for everyone's curiosity, the client was within hailing distance when we exited into the space station's territory. Moore whispered, I thought he was based on a planet, while the captain set up the call. Z clicked a pincher quietly. Either he left it, or he's a liar. Paint shushed him as the client appeared on screen. He really was a human, about college age, naturally tan skin, artificially blonde hair, a fashion sense that I would tactfully describe as rich person nonsense, so much metallic embroidery, sheesh. He was polite enough, and all I was getting from his body language was that he was anxious about whether we'd done the weird job correctly. It was probably a good thing the camera didn't reach into the hallway where all of us were staring at him. Captain Sunlight went over the details calmly and convinced the guy that we'd fulfilled our end of the bargain. He authorized the money transfer and looked relieved, muscles relaxing visibly, I was pretty sure these weren't the mannerisms of someone setting up a marriage proposal. He'd still be nervous about that. What was it? On behalf of all of us, Captain Sunlight asked again, what sort of sensitive nature is this task we've just done for you? I hope we won't face repercussions down the line for obstructing some lawmaker's telescopic view of a crime or playing unwitting decoy. Apparently the good captain had also been thinking up possible scenarios. Those hadn't even occurred to me. No, no, nothing like that, he said, waving both hands. Well, almost, no, it's nothing like that. No? asked Captain Sunlight with a lift of her chin. Which one is almost? Might we be a suspect in some criminal case now? No, no. He was getting really flustered now. It's the telescope one. So a lawmaker was watching us sitting there suspiciously. No. He threw his hands in the air. I tripped on the steps, all right? In public. Boarding my ship, I fell all the way down the stairs, and it was terrible. I had to bribe everybody who was there in person to keep it to themselves, but I'm going to go visit someone, and... He bit off the rest of the sentence. That someone likes to borrow their planet's largest telescope to watch me leave when I do. Your ship blocked the view. Thanks to wormholes and my top-notch computing formula, I was able to arrange it all before the light travelled that many light years away from home. He ran his fingers through his hair, messing up completely. Now please don't tell anybody. Captain Sunlight assured him that she wouldn't spread it around and bid him a regal goodbye. The screen clicked off. The snickering in the hallway turned into full-blown laughter. Trilly stalked up to join us, with Coles walking just outside of accidental pincher poke range. What was it, she demanded. Was the client an imbecile? Yes, Z told her, but not in a way we expected. Paint was still laughing. He didn't want somebody to see that he fell down the stairs. Murr filled her in on the other details, but Terili's antennae angled into a frown. Why go to all that trouble? Why not simply threaten witnesses and be done with it? I suspect, I said, that the person watching was someone he has a crush on. He doesn't want them to think badly of him. Trili looked at Jay. Human mating rituals. Looks that way. 
Trilly turned her faceted glare towards me. Why do your people make things so complicated? I laughed. Hey, this was overkill as far as I'm concerned, too. If the person you want to date can't handle a little pratfall like that, then they're clearly not a good choice. Trilly was quiet for a moment, then said, Two legs, right. This must come up often for you. It really doesn't. She shook her head and turned away. Paint spoke up helpfully. You should hear about the mating proposals that they write in the sky. Very, no thank you. As Trilly walked away and the rest of the crew found other things to do, Paint told me, I do want to hear about those. How do they write them? Does the answer go in the sky too? Not for the proposals I've seen, I said, but there's always a first. 